Break 019, unbelievable news out of New England. Uh, it took me by a shockwave. Literally a tidal wave hit me. I did not see this coming. Cam Newton cut. Now, Mac Jones, the starting quarterback. What implications does this have for this New England team? Let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, I hope everyone's having a great day. My name's G Slink. I'm doing my thing. And of course, I hope you are as well. And I hope you're having a fire day to day. Fire! Yes! Look what I have created! I have made fire! Because we are going to be going over Mac Jones and talking about this situation and why I think that Mac Jones could be Dak Prescott 2.0. I'm serious. Watch out. And we'll talk about this. So let's go into it in further detail. Why I think Mac Jones was, this might have been an easy decision after seeing Mac Jones in the preseason to go ahead and let Cam Newton go. But you're probably wondering like, okay, why are you throwing out the Dak Prescott comparisons? They're different players. It's different sort of thing. But you go back to 2016 and that Dallas Cowboy team. All right, I know that rhymed. However, you look at the strengths and what that team was in 2016 and you say, wait a minute, isn't there some resemblance here to that roster? And you say, okay, you got Tyron Smith at left tackle. You got Ronald Leary, who was good at the time. He was a good veteran there at left guard. And then at center, they had uh, Travis Frederick, all pro, of course. And then you got, um, you know, Zach Martin, another all pro. And then you had also uh, Doug Free at right tackle, I believe, or something like that. I think it was Doug Free. He, he, but he was good. He was good that year. Again, another veteran, but really solid. They stayed healthy for the most part up front. They were a great offensive line, the best offensive line in football. Well, there you go. New England Patriots, best offensive line in football in my projections, at least right now. I mean, from top to bottom, in terms of coaching staff, in terms of players, they're very, very solid. Isaiah Wynn, Michael Onwu, David Andrews, Shaq Lawson, or sorry, sorry, Shaq Lawson, Shaq Mason. I'm a Jets fan, sorry. I have the, you know, Lawson trade on my mind. But you got Trent Brown, great offensive line. You got depth too across the board. Justin Heron played well when he was out there, when he had to step up. You got Ted Karras, a good center. I know David Andrews a little bit banged up right now. If nothing else, Ted Karras can come in and be a good player. But this is going to be a power run team. That's their identity. This offensive line is going to be stellar. And so there's one comparison. Now you look at the receiving core, you say, well, the Cowboys had better receivers, right? Well, hold on a second. They had Dak, or, uh, Des Bryant. Des Bryant in 2016 was by no means the ex, put up the ex Des Bryant, at, you know, that we've seen throughout his career. He was kind of regressing at that point. I don't think he had 1,000 yards that year. He had like seven, 800 yards. And then they also had Cole Beasley in the slot, who is a good player, of course. But at the time, he was just, you know, getting a solid slot receiver. He only had like 500 yards that year. And then they had like Terrence Williams, who was, again, another okay number two option. So you look at their receiving core and you say, well, I mean, no thousand yard receiver. It was just okay. And it wasn't crazy. And you look at this receiving core, you got Jacoby Myers. I think could be a good number two. You got Nelson Aguilar, good, solid receiver. Again, Kendrick Bourne, Nikhil Harry. We'll see if he makes the roster. Gunnar Olewski, interesting guy to keep an eye out on there. If nothing else, special teams. So you got a pretty good receiving core here, but it's again, there's no number one. I don't think there's any maybe thousand yard receiver. But you got great tight ends. They obviously had Jason Witten, who was really good, too, there. You got Hunter Henry, Jonu Smith, going to be a you know big dynamic there in the receiving game, as well as blockers in this run game. So there you go. And then they drafted Ezekiel Elliott in the first round, of course, and they had that amazing run game. I think Damian Harris could be that sleeper breakout. I mean, he's not a sleeper anymore now that Sonny Michelle's gone. I think that he's fully on people's radar. And, you know, you got more running backs, too. So if you have injuries, James White's going to be the great receiving back here still. And then you got Ramondre Stevenson, who's looked really good in preseason. J.J. Taylor's looked really good in preseason as well. But the main thing is their identity is up front on this offensive line, just like the Dallas Cowboys. Mac Jones was in is going to be in a place to succeed, just like Dak Prescott was in his rookie year with a great offensive line. And this is barring major injuries. The offensive line has to stay healthy up front. Sure, they can lose one player, but you got to stay healthy just, you know, to be a top five offensive line, to be the best offensive line in football. You got to stay healthy. But uh, with that being said, Mac Jones is in a prime position to succeed. I think it was a great decision for this team long term to go ahead and pull the trigger and say, and obviously we don't know the whole off the field issues that were going on there with Cam Newton, not sure. But with that being said, it doesn't matter the way Mac Jones has looked in preseason. He's looked like a veteran. It looks like he's already been in the league for a couple of years and he knows what he's doing. His processing speed is right there where it should be. Um, I think he has more upside too than Cam Newton as a, you know, overall in terms of everything, you know, yeah, he doesn't maybe have the running ability, but uh, nonetheless, I think he's going to give you a lot more upside in your offense. 
So I'm really excited that Mac Jones will be the starter here for this team. And I think that is going to be good news for the New England Patriots. And I think this is a team that could be a sneaky playoff team. For sure, not just a sneaky playoff team, but a sneaky contending playoff team. So just watch out for that. I wouldn't be surprised. Mac Jones could be very efficient this year, just like Dak Prescott was in his first year. They're going to rely on the run game, right? They're going to run the ball, pound the ball, just like they did in Dallas in 2016, a ton with Ezekiel Elliott. They're going to lean on the run game. Mac Jones, just be efficient, be be smart, and just kind of roll, you know? And, and Mac Jones, within his own right, is a talented dude, and I really think he's going to be able to take over this offense and succeed just in a great, great spot. Good coaching, of course, helps with Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels. You know, that's really going to help out too. But that's my overall synopsis of this. Let me know what you think. But do you feel the same way? I just really, really believe that this team, if you're looking for a Dak Prescott level season and, you know, maybe an underrated candidate, people are kind of not talking about Mac Jones as a rookie of the year candidate. It's like Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, maybe Zach Wilson's gotten moved up in the rankings. But Mac Jones could be a sneaky, sneaky, uh, you know, offensive rookie of the year or, you know, offensive, or sorry, not just offensive rookie of the year, but offensive rookie of the year. So keep an eye out on Mac Jones this year. Mac and cheese going to be a fun one to keep an eye out on. So I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, my name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, of course, and I hope you are as well. And I'll talk to you later.